All right, here at Astros Spring Training in West Palm Beach, uh, a lot of these players hard at work, but one of the guys has a key role in this organization from a communication standpoint is Jin Loy Herrera, the uh, team's interpreter. Good to see you, man. Uh, you. People see you on TV all the time in post-game interviews, pre-game, translating for a lot of these guys that are on this team, and they're just like, man, that's a big role on this team that's full of players from all over the place. Talk about your role and how much you enjoy it. Uh, I mean, it's a dream job for me, immigrating here from the Dominican Republic, just being able to make it a little bit easier for these guys to be able to communicate with you know, with the media, with the fans, even staff at times. Dream job for me. Been doing it for my parents for the last 20 years. And wow. This is almost part of my day-to-day -day life. So. Now, your background, you, you, you grew up in the Dominican Republic, and at the age of eight, your, your family immigrated. <laughs> you landed in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and at that point, were you speaking a little bit, a bit of English, a lot of English? Where were you at that point? Not, not much. I knew how to count to 10 when I moved to the United States. Other, other than that, I wow. just do nothing. <laughs> Are you, you're in baseball now. You, you speak so clearly. You have such a vital role, and that I mean that's so important in baseball because this team and a lot of teams you've got American players, Dominican Republic, Cubans, uh, Venezuelan, you know, everything, yeah, everything down there across the map. You've got to be able to understand these guys in their specific mm -hmm. language and how they yeah. present it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. And it's just like the little things, like a lot of guys say, from different countries say a couple words differently here and just being able to bounce back from all of them, just trying to pick up as much as I can from there. But, yeah, it's definitely not for the faint of heart at times. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you get into to this business of uh, being an interpreter? You, you worked for the Cardinals organization. Mm -hmm. You, you joined the Astros in 2022. How did you get into this side of things? So I worked in international operations and fellowship with the Cardinals back in 2016. And after that ended, I moved back to Pennsylvania and just applied for a lot of these jobs, interpreter, translator jobs. And one of the things that I kept hearing back was, you don't have formal Spanish experience, even though I'm a native speaker. <laughs> so I started teaching Spanish actually in Philadelphia at a high school there. and. Wow just taught Spanish for a couple of years and just continue applying for this job, these jobs and thankfully landed here last year. In your wildest dreams, did you, growing up, did you think you would be doing this for a Major League Baseball team? Not growing up, but it definitely was a goal for me in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. And again, this one was the perfect storm, perfect opportunity for that. And thankfully, was able to get the job here and be able to move down and make the transition here a little easier. What do these relationships mean to you? Because these guys have to build a trust with mm -hmm. you and you know and the same for you with mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. you're on the spot you're trying to help them when they're dealing with media just to, to put them at ease mm -hmm. that's a that's a key role to make you feel good knowing that you're providing that kind of service no yeah that definitely for sure and this is a thing that I've I've been doing for my parents for as long as I can remember mm -hmm. so like I said this is something that is very personal to me I try to do the best that I can to make sure that their message gets across out there but no, yeah, this is something that, again, I did it for my parents so long, and doing it for them just means the world to me and that they also have the trust to trust their words with me as well. It's not only interpreting because you're doing that, but then you've got cameras in your face. You're dealing with a lot of different elements that are part of that as well that yep. maybe you weren't trained for. So mm -hmm. you, you had to learn a lot yeah, definitely. in this job, didn't you? Definitely, yeah. The spring training last year was one of those things that, that, that was my learning curve. There was a lot of learning there. Then going to Houston, Jordan hitting a two-run two homer game, like the first home game. So there's a lot of a learning curve there with the fans and, you know, yeah. obviously how loud Houston gets, but with the fans, the media and everything. But, yeah, a little bit more used to it now, but definitely was a learning curve. Walk through the preparation as you do that. You know these guys are in demand media-wise, and mm -hmm. when big events happen, mm -hmm. like that Jordan home mm -hmm. run, in your mind, are you already preparing? All right, in about 30 minutes, there's going to be an onslaught of media that I've got to be ready for. Yeah, How do you prepare? These guys prepare to play. Yeah. You've got to prepare to do your job. Yeah, to an extent, and I'm always watching the game as well. So the, obviously the situation of the game dictates yeah. uh, whether I'm willing to be doing media with some of the guys as well. Whenever I see Jordan come up in the bottom of the ninth or any of our Spanish-speaking guys come up bottom of the ninth, game on the line, I'm always ready to sprint down to the dugout in case they do hit a walk-off. So uh, there is some mental preparation, but the game does dictate uh, how that goes. So I usually don't get called blindsided by it. How, what kind of reaction do you get from these players now that you've been around them for uh, you know last season, now another season? Uh, 
the relationships you've built, what, what reaction do you get from yeah. them? I know they appreciate what you do for them. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say we're almost like a family here. Uh, we yeah. spend so much time together and again, just them trusting me with their words is just such a big thing. It means the world to me. Mm -hmm. So like now I saw a lot of the guys yesterday for the first time in, in spring. So uh, greeted each other with hugs. We'll probably have lunch together later at, over here and you know, but Mm -hmm. And you, you, your home games, you're on the road, you're at mm -hmm. spring training. Yeah. I mean, this is just like it is for them. This is a, it's a long grind for you as well, for everybody yeah. in the organization. No, it definitely is. And like I said, last year was the first time doing all that. Yeah. There's some getting used to, but, you know, we're here. And I love it. Makes it a little bit easier that, you know, they make the job easier for me. So I do love it, though. All right. First season and you guys won a World Series. I mean, that's a pretty good start for you here with the Astros, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> goal is to do that every year. So hopefully, let's see if we can go back to back. <laughs> is this across the board in Major League Baseball? Does every team now have one? Is it common now? Yeah, so it is part of the CBA, if I'm not mistaken. Every mm -hmm. team uh, is required to have an interpreter for the team. Mm -hmm. um, the way that role goes from team to team is a little bit different. Sometimes they're coaches, sometimes they're they work in the just communications department, sometimes work in baseball ops. So it varies a little bit from team to team, but I do think every team is required to have an interpreter at the moment. All right, so if viewers are watching you interpret. We, we see you do your thing. You're at a news conference for Christian <laughs> Ivier, yeah, this already at camp. What's going through your mind when you're listening to them and you've got just a matter of seconds before you've got to turn it around and, and, and say it in English from whatever, however they're presenting it in their language. Talk about the stress level with that or is it now you easing into that? It is a little bit easier now. Uh, it gets a little bit harder for the guys that speak a little bit more, but my biggest thing, I just try to get the biggest key points of what they're saying and then just try to translate it in, or interpret it into English. Yeah. And But try to get just like mostly the key points, make sure that their message is still there. Maybe not saying it word for word, but make sure that their message still does get across. Do you also relate to uh, coaching? If coaches have a question too, are you dealing with them as well yeah. in translating? Yeah, sometimes um, our organization is lucky enough. We have a lot of Spanish speaking coaches in our major league staff. Um, but I definitely do work with some of the coaches that don't speak Spanish to just communicate information with some of the guys, make sure everything is clear. Well, you do a great job, man. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> big role with the organization. Jinloy Herrera, the team interpreter for the Houston Astros, starting his second season here in the organization, already hard at work here at spring training, doing some great service. Great work with the Houston Astros. Thank Appreciate you. your time, man. Thank you.